Hi, this lesson is going to be on a John Fahey song called Spanish Dance. The tuning of the song is standard tuning, so you can keep your guitar in the same tuning, but you'll just want to capo up to the third fret. And then you'll be set to go for the lesson. The recording that this lesson is based on is the first take version on Fahey's Death Chance album. So, yeah. Here's, uh, here's one go through of the song and then the lesson will follow shortly after. mistakes there, but um, I think that hopefully paints the picture of what Fahey roughly plays on the recording. So it starts out with this intro with just a few chords, a C major, an A minor, then a G major, and then a C major, and that's really it. And then he gets into the first section, which goes like this. pattern go? Well it starts out with uh, a C and then you can kind of think of it in terms of the bass line, what the bass is doing. So it goes from C to the G to the F, which you'll fret with your thumb, and then back to the G. treble side what you'll be doing is a little bit it's actually not that um, not too involved um, uh, that's really it
That'll make a little bit more sense once you combine the bass and treble parts, but it's really just third fret of the top string, first fret of the second string. So you can see how that fits in with the C chord. And you just go first string, second string, third string. Uh, no, just first string, second string. And then, and then yeah, so now getting into every note individually, maybe that'll be a better way to kind of internalize it. It'll be uh, fifth string of the C chord, and then a pinch on the fourth and top strings. And then you hit the second string. Remember, this is just a C chord with the third fret of the top string. And then what you do is you creep down to the third fret of the bottom string. And then now what you've got is a new chord where you've crept down with your ring finger down to the third fret of the bottom string and then now remove your middle finger from the equation. But these two fingers stay stationary. If you just leave them in place it'll make this chord transition way easier. Just try that for now. And then you can add in the actual picking pattern, which is again, fifth string, pinch first and fourth string, second string, After that, then you hit the bass string, and then top string on that third fret, and then fourth string open. Like that. Bottom string, top string. planted so if you sweep up it kind of hits this power chord or power double stop I guess so that's where things are right now okay now here's the next part you hit a um, you pluck that second fret uh, first fret of the second string um, so you got like that. You're still just in this second chord. Open fourth string. And then now you're almost done, so don't worry too much, and then it'll go like that with an F chord. So what you'll do there is you can actually still keep these two fingers stationary, first fret of the second string, third fret of the top string, but you'll just add in the second fret of the third string, and then creep over with your thumb to grab the first fret of the bottom string. So notice that every chord so far has these sort of it, they all rhyme with each other because of this top two strings. That was the first one, the C chord, then the G chord. A type of G chord because it's a little different from the usual G chord because you've got this note fretted. And you can add in the third fret of the fourth string. But notice how the only fingers that you're really moving are actually your thumb and these two fingers. And the rest of your hand doesn't have to move that much. Alright, so you got... And 
once you get into that f that four chord, this F chord, what you do is a big pinch. It's the top two strings and the bottom string. You pinch all three, and then you hit the fourth string. So you got. And then you hit another big pinch, except this is now just a normal, more normal looking G chord. For the first time, you lift your first fret of the second string. And then you, you can pinch the top three strings and then the bottom string. Or you can do that a couple ways, or you can sweep up. So. things in there. Uh. and the pointer finger. Holding those down. But um, yeah, that's one to practice, and that's really the first section of the song. So that'll come up again, but um, yeah, that's, that's uh, one of the tougher parts of the song. So then the second part of the song is probably the more easy uh, the easier part, it'll um, go like this. Really what it is, is you're just going from G to C. G and then just repeating it. Time, but now talk, but maybe play it a bit more random. So G, C, F, G, F, C, G, C, F, G, G. Okay. Now, if you were to pick those out. fretting two notes, third fret of the top two to, of the top string and the bottom string. And if you omit the fifth string, that's just a G chord. And he's got a on a, a an alternating bass line between the sixth and fourth strings. And then on the top strings he's just going hitting it three times, but then doing it in a certain rhythm. What he's doing is going sixth string, uh, and then pinching the fourth and top strings. Second string open, and then sixth string.
okay, okay, here's what it is. Sixth string, fourth and first strings, and then everything else from here is on its own. Second string, sixth string, uh, second string, sixth string, first string, fourth string, second string. That's a lot, so. That's, that's the pattern. So sixth string, pinch, then second string, sixth string, first string, fourth string, second string. goes to the C chord, so it'll go pinch treble side with the bot with the fifth string. And then he'll hit the he'll hit the alternating bass note on the fourth string. And then uh, and then do the same thing on the F chord. Pinch the top treble strings with the bottom string the alternating note. So. Uh. And then he'll finish it out with this drum. But that's really how the whole thing goes. And then, so th those are kind of the building blocks, and now you've got to assemble it based on this kind of form that he's got. So again, it's three sections. The first one where he'll go G, F, C, G, F, C, G, F, C, G, G. And that's section one. And if you were to pick it out, it'll go. section then you play it almost this excuse me the almost the exact same it'll except this time it'll go G C F C F G C F G G G section, same thing, except maybe just play it a bit more randomly. Sometimes you go C to F, sometimes you go F to C. F, C. Except this time, on the third time, he doesn't finish it out on a strum, he'll just keep playing it. gets into this third section, which is kind of interesting and nice. So what it is, is, um, and I think the way that will make it a bit easier to learn is if you just forget about some of the nitty-gritty details and just learn a simple version of it and then steadily kind of like add layers um, of the onion onto it. So the simple simplified version of this to start out is that he just let's start out with the most basic version just strumming out the notes. Uh, um, so it'll go What it starts out with is an E7 chord, second fret of the, what is it, <laughs> second fret of the fifth string, first fret of the third string. So strum that, and then to an F, but fret it like this, thumb on the first fret of the sixth string, and then on the 
treble side, you got third fret of the fourth string, sec second fret of the third, first frets of the top two strings. So you got E7. One. It's actually a D, supposed to be kind of like a D7 chord, and then you'll fret it with a second fret of the bottom string with your thumb, open fourth string, second fret of the third string, first fret of the second string. So you got. got a G uh, major and the way you can fret it is third fret of the bottom string mute the fifth string with the fleshy part of your thumb um, before the camera cut out it was just how to play that G mute the fifth string with the fleshy part of your uh, ring finger there As a little tag, what you'll do is just repeat the last bit of that. Play the D7 again, to the G, and then to the C. So again, E7. those out think of it like this now try and just play an alternating bass line on each of the chords now because now that you can strum it out and you kind of have an idea of the form see if you can just play an alternating bass on the sixth string and fourth strings so it's, you add this seven you'll go six string fourth string where you'll hit the second fret of the fourth string which I guess is a little different from this E7 chord but that's the actual chord that is technically being played but to play the alternating bass he actually just frets the second fret of the fourth string sorry for any confusion there Into the four chords. 
pick up second fret of the third string and then get right into the four chord. fret of the second string. So it'll go third string, second string, third string, second string. And the third fret of the second string. So everything's kind of all um, in between the beat. Now there aren't really much pinches going on here. So, so it's all from the start. Same thing, you're just going third string, second string. And then, and then you can do a little another pickup. Third string. And then pinch the second and bottom string. this thing. So it'll go bon uh, fifth string, something like fifth string, second string, second fret of the fifth string. And then he'll go third fret of the fifth string, and then catch the first fret of the second string. Uh. second string. So it's like a C chord. And then he'll do this walk down. So on the bass side it's really just 3-0, 3-0 on the bottom two strings. And now try pinching with the C chord, second string. It's just changing the rhythm. But he's really just using this, I think one word is like a pivot note. He's sort of using this as the pivot. It's not really moving and everything else is kind of moving around it. And then again, there's this tag, so he just repeats that last little bit. So yeah, that's really that, that last little bit. So starting from the top. That you can make this even a little bit more fancy. That's why I was mentioning like you can start out with just really simple strums and then slowly kind of like add the complexity to it. And one of the ways you can kind of dress it up even more is on this first part. On the bass side, if you want to, you know, challenge yourself even more, you can play the full E major shape. side it's rather than just an alternating bass I think what he does is he goes only on that E chord he goes one octave five octave The other thing
thing you can do is just think a little bit about the hammer-ons. That's really the entire song. That's half. That's actually half of the song. And then the next half, what he does is the same thing. He'll just start out with this. Um, he'll actually start out on this this kind of thing where I'll go. So on section two, he'll restart the song on section two. And then section two, remember, it consists of three chunks. Except on this second half, on the second chunk of section two, he'll actually get back into the intro um, chord uh, picking pattern. doing a form of the song is intro and then section one Thanks for listening, for bearing with me trying to talk and play at the same time. But yeah, no, that's pretty much um, Spanish Dance by John Fahey. So it helps, I hope that helps to kind of understand the song. And yeah, so I'll see you next time.